Hello, and today we have something special. Today we have this boxed 286 system. This I managed to get at an estate sale, and um, I saw the pictures of the estate sale, and I saw this box in the pictures, and I'm like, I just need to, to have it. Um, I didn't know what was inside. I mean, obviously an office mate, but I didn't, the pictures only showed the box, it didn't show what was inside, so Today we're going to open this up and see what we actually bought. Before we open this up, let's take a quick look at the box. We can see this is an Office Mate 286 by OSICOM with a nice big Made in USA sticker right there. So you know that means quality, right? Or it means, I don't know, something. Apparently you can get either a 12 or a 16. Presumably that's the megahertz, presumably the speed of the CPU. So this is the faster 16 megahertz variety. Turning the box around to the side, you can see we're gonna have a bit of fun once we um, open this up. We can see that we have one meg of RAM, expandable, which depending on whether this thing works, I may expand it. 12 or 16 megahertz, well, you know it's 16. Built-in graphics, ooh, free on-site maintenance. Well, something goes wrong with the system, I guess I'll have to call them and uh, see if they can come help. A clock calendar, which I guess means there's a CMOS battery in it, which I hope isn't broken or, you know, leaking or anything. Sleek slimline design. So I guess that must be like a pizza box style or something? Not quite sure. We have a floppy drive, comes at DOS, a keyboard, and a mouse. All right, my first time opening this box. Okay, so we have some padding in here. And inside, the first thing I see is a keyboard, a Mitsumi keyboard. Don't know if this is the keyboard that would have come to the system originally or not. And this box is taped closed. It doesn't look like the original tape. This looks like someone put some tape on this box to close it. So I guess we'll have a look and see what this keyboard looks like. Next in the box, I see we have, see we have a mouse. And also seems to be an interesting smell coming out of the box. I wonder if this was like in a smoker's house or something or if there's something else that's going weird about it. But anyway, we have a mouse. We have kind of a standard two button Microsoft mouse. Serial, but with a um, PS2 adapter on it. And a power cable, which, you know, I don't have enough of, but it's nice to have one. Finally, the computer is in here. I will, um, I'll take that out and I will show it to you. It'll be a bit hard to uh, kind of get it out on camera, so next time you see this, it'll be out of the box. And here we are, the Office Mate 286 16. Yeah, I guess you can say this is a sleek design, kind of pizza boxy. Interestingly, the box only mentioned the three and a half inch floppy drive. We also have five and a quarter inch floppy drive that I'm gonna assume is 1.2 meg and not 360K, but not really sure, I'm just gonna assume that. Um, we got a reset button, power button, and a key lock, which I hope is unlocked. On the back we have what I assume is a standard AT power supply, which I hope works. We're not gonna power this thing on until I open it up and make sure everything looks looks good. We have what looks to be a PS2 mouse and keyboard port, two serial ports, a parallel port, a video port, and what looks to be five expansion slots, which being a 286, I'm gonna assume those are all ISA slots. Just kind of a better look at the back of the case. Power supply, which I don't know if the camera can see, but I can see there's some dust in the fan. And then over here we have all the ports and well, it looks like no expansion cards, so we'll see what's inside this thing and see what we can do with it. Well, I guess the next thing to do is try to figure out how to take this thing apart. And I see there's some screws on the side, so hopefully if I take these off, the case will come off. 
some weird like tape or something on on that screw to get their screw off. Spin it around and get the other two screws on the other side. I do wonder if this has ever been opened before. I also wonder what this was used for and how much it was used for. Interestingly, you know, I found it, as, I, as you saw, still in the box. So I don't know if it was used, how long it was used for, what it was used for. There's a hard drive inside, but we can see some files from the previous owner. So it looks like the case just comes off and minus some like dust, it doesn't really look that bad. It's dirty, definitely needs a bath, but I don't see anything that would prevent me from turning it on. Though I need to somehow check the power supply before turning it on, which does indeed seem to be a standard AT power supply, so Worst comes to worst, it could be replaced. All right, let's take a good look at what's inside here. I see the RAM here. I don't know how much RAM this is. I don't know if this is the one mega RAM the box talking about, or if this was expanded. Next to it, we see our socket for 287. And then over here, we can see our Harris 286 processor at 16 megahertz. We across to here, we can see our BIOS chip, Phoenix BIOS chip, and hiding under the ISA expansion is our best friend, the Dallas clock chip. Over here, you can see we have a Western Digital hard drive. There are floppy drives, both with a sticker on them, so maybe both floppy drives were installed at the factory. We have our power supply with that same sticker on it saying that the power supply was also QC passed on another sticker so it was passed then hopefully it still works now okay so looking around the board some more and I see this chip here that happens to have a QC sticker on it it also says VGA so I wonder if this is our video chip so I guess the next step here is just well taking it apart so I can inspect the board some more, clean the board, clean the case, and then put it back together and see what happens. So taking it apart, I don't even know where to start because I can start trying to take out this ISA expansion, which, I mean, riser. Take this screw off here, I guess. And this screw. So I guess if I take it apart, I mean, I'm just gonna try to take the motherboard out. And I guess that's far apart as I can or really even need to take it. Hopefully this case isn't that dirty. Then I need to take it fully, fully apart. So I think I got enough to get, yep, I can get. Maybe I can take this out? Okay. So here's our ISA riser with a nice big connector on the bottom. And three ISO slots on one side, and two on the other. And a nice big slot on the motherboard. Okay, so I've taken out all the screws on the floppy drive tray, so that slides out. Let's see if I can get this out. It would be easier to get out if I took the cables off, now wouldn't it? So you plug the floppy cable, and, and look at that. Bar comes out. This is a Mitsumi floppy drive. So I wonder if the Mitsumi keyboard is part of this. Obviously, Office may, or Osicom didn't make the computer. They probably just built it out of presumably off the shelf parts. So with that detached, let's attach the, cable, the power supply from the motherboard and detach the floppy and hard drive from the motherboard. Let's take off the screws holding the motherboard down. I had the motherboard unscrewed and just 
I don't know, this thing still smells kind of weird. I think it's cigarette smell and just... Well, okay, it wasn't that bad under the motherboard. And it's not that dirty. I mean, it's a little dirty. I've seen worse. Back in the motherboard, it's surprisingly clean. There was a bunch of dirt just on the back of the power supply. That's definitely the filthiest part of this thing, so... Even if it does work, it's still gonna need a nice clean. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but just how gross that power supply is. That's uh, it's gonna need to be opened up probably. Well, with the motherboard out, let's just take everything else out, I guess. Turn this around. Okay. We've got power button here, connected to the power supply. We've got a grounding cable for the power supply. And the power supply is bolted down to the bottom and to the back. So let's take that out first, for it, and then I'll take the hard drive cage out. It looks like it screws in from the bottom. So I unscrewed the bottom of this, but still didn't seem to want it. It kind of slides out, but the power supply is in the way. So I'm gonna take that out first. So with those four screws taken out, there's still two more that hold a little metal bracket into the case. So if I can get those out. And yeah, this power supply is just gross. All right, we can take out our power supply. After I unplug it from the hard drive, that is. Oh, yep, so now everything is free. Power supply is free. Take out the hard drive and take out our e cable there. We also have a Mitsumi drive. I wonder what Mitsumi has to do with this or that's just the parts that they used. And then we have a hard drive, Western Digital. Can't see how big it is unless I take it out. And I wonder if it works. I will probably replace the hard drive with a compact flash card, but if the hard drive works, I'll keep it, or at least back it up, so I'll test that at some point. The best thing to do is take off the front panel so I can take off the power button, because these cables don't seem to want to detach from the button, so I need to unscrew the button from the front. Oh, I see. I don't need to take those screws out first. There's two screws. All right, well, that's it all disassembled. Now it's time to clean it. All right, hello back. It's been some time later and I've cleaned the motherboard and the case and I've tried to clean the power supply. I don't know how clean it is, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's see how the motherboard is doing. Visually, it looks perfectly clean. Well, not perfectly clean, but visually it looks clean. It looks perfectly fine. I see nothing wrong with it. So I figure might as well try to plug it in and just power it on on its own. Let's see what happens. I'm not gonna use the power supply that came with it just yet. I'm using an ATX power supply, a known good one, and I have an ATX to AT adapter that I'm going to plug into the board, and we're just going to power it on, and we're just going to see what happens. I put the ISA riser in because I don't know if this motherboard requires it to turn on or not. I don't know if we boot up without it or not, so I figured let's just put it in anyway. So let's connect the AT power supply cables, remembering that the two blacks go in the middle, though so it is black to black in the center. So that goes there. This one goes next to it. And now we're ready to power it on. I'm going to cut to a VGA capture so we can see if anything at all happens from this board. Okay, we've got the board all hooked up to the VGA capture connected to the power supply. So I'm gonna press the power button and hopefully nothing explodes. Oh, oh, hey, look at that. It uh, it works, I was not expecting that. We have Phoenix Video BIOS, Phoenix RAM BIOS, OSICOM Technologies. Okay, keyboard failure, I didn't plug a keyboard in, that's fine. So looks like we have 640K RAM and then some extended, so it looks like a total of one mega RAM like the box says. Invalid configuration, so I guess the clock battery is dead. 
Yes, the diskette seek failure because I didn't plug a disk drive in. Press F1 to continue, F2 to run setup. Okay, so eventually I have to plug a keyboard in, press F2 and go through all of the all of the settings. So far, so good. We have a working motherboard. So I'm just curious to take a quick look at the drives. I uh, looked at the motherboard and the serial number on the motherboard matched the serial number that the box said for the motherboard. So I'm curious if the serial number of the hard drive matches what the box says. I'm also just curious to see how big this hard drive is. Don't know if it works. We'll find out. Whether it works or not, I'll probably still replace this with a compact flash card anyway. You know, it'll be faster. I can easily take it out to put files on it and it won't be as loud, but you know, it won't be a hard drive, so I don't know. I'll see, I'll see if this hard drive works. If it does, I'll probably try to back it up. See if there's anything interesting on it. Unscrewing the hard drive. We see that it is Western Digital hard drive. Fairly old Western Digital hard drive, I imagine. I've never seen that type of logo on a hard drive before. It says there's no defects, at least when it was came out of the factory. Normally there'd be a list here of factory defects, and this has none, so that's interesting. Here is the serial number and the heads and cylinders, but it doesn't say what size, so we'll have to see what the BIOS thinks, how big this is based on those heads and cylinders, and it looks like this drive is from 1990. Looking on the bottom here, we see what I presume is a motor and the board, and it looks like an adapter bracket that was holding the hard drive into the drive cage. So I'm gonna go check that box real quick and see if it matches the serial number that was on here. All right, and now, at least to me, the scariest part of this is this 320 watt power supply. When I first took it out of the computer, this grill was just caked in dust and so was the fan. I've yet to open it, but I did just blow air through it. So hopefully I didn't blow like, you know, dust and crap into the power supply and I don't know if there's any bad caps or anything in it or or what. Like I could just plug it in and see what happens. And maybe I'm a little afraid to do that, but maybe I will just do that. Or, you know, I don't want to just blindly replace this because maybe this does work. So I don't know. I'm not really sure what I want to do with it. All right, it's plugged in. I guess I'll press the button. The fan turned on. A good sign. It's not connected to anything. The fan is on. I'm going to uh, I'm going to assume this is actually a good power supply. So honestly, I think it's time to put the machine back together and just turn it on with this power supply. And if it all works, then I'll connect a keyboard and we'll go through the BIOS setup and try to boot into the hard drive. And now the fun part: remembering what goes where. I'm pretty sure I put the screws in order so I could find them again. So, all right, so I know obviously the power supply goes here. I'm gonna screw it on to the bottom of the case there, screw it on to the back of the case. So I guess let's start with the screws at the back of the case, which I think are these screws here. Most of these screws are identical or at least close enough. So, I mean, I think I could be able to figure this out. Let's put the screw back in and let's get started. All right, well, power supply is in and put the little front panel back on. This wire just kind of would sit there, but put it back once I put the hard drive cage back in. So I saw that on the cable, there's this little plastic clip here holding them together. So this would like tape it somewhere, but this adhesive is gone. And I don't know, I kind of want to Kind of my cable management my, my own. So I'm going to try to take that off. See if I can't just like pry this open, right? There we go. Now I don't hate things like this, but I just wanted to take it out so I can try to just reorganize the cables a little bit inside. I'll probably just use zip ties or something and I'll find a way to to make it better. 
So now we have one Molex, two Molex, one floppy, three Molex, three Molex, and one floppy. Probably gonna need an adapter because the Compact Flash adapter uses a floppy cable if I feel like using it. Otherwise, obviously this is a fine amount of Molex and obviously the motherboard connectors. So let's move on. All right, let's put the hard drive cage back in. I don't know if when I power it on, I'm gonna to try to test it with the hard drive. I might just try to test it with just the power supply and the motherboard and then plug in the floppy drives and the hard drives one by one just to make sure I don't like overload the power supply or just in case there is something wrong with the power supply. I mean, as of right now, it seems like it's fine. But, you know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. We have a bunch of screws. I think this goes through the ground cable. We ground it to here. This, can, this grounding cable can obviously go anywhere, which is here when I first got this. So I'll put it back, you know, where it was. All right, the hard drive cage back in. This is now significantly heavier than it was before. And it's also time to put the motherboard back in. I will probably upgrade the RAM. And if this Dallas clock chip doesn't work, I do have a replacement here made by Glitchworks. So I hope this works because this is a 12887, which some 286s don't like, but maybe this one will take it. I will replace the Dallas clock chip if it needs it. I will just try to write some BIOS settings to it, like, you know, set the time, unplug it, and then see if it keeps the time. If it does, great. If not, then I'll take this out and I'll replace it. And for the RAM, yeah, maybe a bit later I will replace it. I should have some more RAM. Looking it up, this should take, I think, a max of four megs. So I should have that lying around. But for now, we'll just leave it. And later on, I may even get a 287 for it, but I don't have one at the moment. Oh, and don't worry, I did take a picture, as you might remember, of where the front panel connectors go. So hopefully the website I found with the jumper setting should also tell me that. All right, let's take a look at this keyboard. Tape closed. I guess I could peel the tape off. I don't want how much I want to damage the box. So let's just cut the tape. All right, let's see what we got. I have an interesting box. We have and keyboard. So we have a, a Mitsumi keyboard that is actually branded Osicom Office Mate. So I don't know what type of deal they have with Mitsumi, but It's not a mechanical keyboard, it's kind of squishy, but hopefully it's all right. And it looks like we have, is an AT keyboard with an AT to PS2 adapter on it. Useful. So I guess let's try this keyboard. All right, well, keyboard is plugged in. The power supply is plugged in. The motherboard is plugged into the power supply. Again, don't know if I need this, but let's plug this in just in case I do need it. EJ capture is connected. So the power button. All right, I'm not actually capturing it right now, but the power light came on on the case here. The power supply fan is on. I don't see any lights on the keyboard yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna power it off. I'm gonna switch to VGA capture. We're gonna see what happens. All right, so we're at VGA capture. Everything is set up as before. Pressing the power button. Okay, good. Get the machine booting this time with the 
This is with the power supply that it came with. The keyboard is also connected. All right, please run setup. I see the num like num lock light has come on on the keyboard. So that's good. Seek failure. I know. I'll plug in the drives once I know everything works. So F2. Okay. Also looks like this is running at a weird resolution that my capture card doesn't like, but eh, good enough. All right, let's try to configure it. Okay, so it doesn't know what time it is. Let's find out. It is rather late when I'm recording this, but you know, whatever, I can stay up late. It's fine. Yep, that's what time it is. And it is November the 3rd of 2021 yep yep i am up late i should probably go to bed but whatever let's record this currently there is no disk drive installed nor is there a hard drive installed that's fine display let's see this can do vga let's find out keyboard installed CPU fast must be um, turbo. So I guess this means 16 megahertz. I don't know what the slow speed would be. Probably 12. And co processor says not installed. All right, F10 to exit. So if one try your boot. Okay, this makes sense. All right, this makes sense. There's no floppy drive attached. So let's test the clock chip. I'm going to turn the computer off. I have unplugged the power supply from the wall. I'm gonna wait a little bit, and then I'm gonna plug it back in and see if it knows what time it is. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that the clock chip battery is dead. So I will try the Glitchworks chip replacement and see if that can help save our settings here. Yep, yeah. That's what I thought. Battery's dead, but hey, at least I know the power supply works and the motherboard works. This is real good news. All right, let's go ahead and replace that Dallas clock chip. Luckily, this one is soldered in, so get our chip puller that worked we got our Dallas clock chip out and as a replacement we're going to use this chip here created by glitchworks just put that in the socket and then I'll put the battery in it all right it's in there and then we'll put the battery in and we'll see if it works before we turn it on let's upgrade the RAM. This is all 30 pin RAM, which is what this is. And I'm pretty sure I have four one meg sticks in here. The max RAM on this is four megs. So let's see what we can find. So the original RAM in here is 80 nanosecond and I found some more 80 nanosecond RAM. I'm pretty sure these are one meg sticks. Not 100% sure, pretty sure. So I'll put these in and we'll see what happens. I don't know if they work, but we'll find out, I guess. I'll try these. They don't work i should have lots of other ram sticks that may work instead this is the ram that i'm taking out and here's the ram that i am putting in all right new ram is installed it's a little bit larger than the old ram but i don't see that being a problem and i put a battery in the glitchworks kit so let's go back to vga capture and see what happens okay booting up the machine with replacement ram and a replacement clock chip. Hopefully this all works. Three, two. Okay, well that's good. Cause I don't know if this RAM works. So uh, this is the sign that it does. Also wasn't sure if these were four one meg six or not. So let's see what it says, how much RAM we have. Oh yeah, there we go. Yep, I was right. Now we have four megs of RAM instead of one. Perfect. And let's see if this machine likes this clock chip replacement. See if I can actually save the settings this time and see what happens. 
All right. It is now this on the, nope to the third. All right, 2021. We will install the drives later. All right, let's again. Let's find out if it supports uh, VGA. Escape tree boot. If this works, I will attach the three and a half inch floppy drive and we'll try to boot DOS from that. And then we'll move on to trying the hard drive. But, you know, baby steps here. All right, counting up the Maram again. I wonder if there's more BIOS settings in just that. Huh, I just saved that. Who doesn't like this chip? It's possible, not all these systems like the a lot of 287s. No, it saved it. I don't know. I'm going to try to reboot it again, but I'm going to try to kill the power first, let it sit for a bit, then plug it back in and see what it says. Maybe it just doesn't like, maybe it just doesn't like not having drives attached. I don't know. Also, the F1 key is a little... The F1 key in the keyboard is a little broken, so apparently I need to fix that. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've plugged in the floppy drives and I've grabbed a DOS boot disk. So we're going to see if we can boot off of a floppy drive. Alright, here we go. Let's also find out if the time saved. I unplugged the power supply and I plugged it back in, so let's see what happens. And yeah, the F1 key in the keyboard is a bit stuck. I pulled it off, put it back on, and it just... It's kind of pressed down a little bit. You can still kind of press it. You have to like push it real hard. It doesn't really work very well, but luckily I just use any PS2 keyboard on this system. Okay. Heard the floppy drive seek. I don't see any errors, so that's a good sign. Yeah, I think our clock chip is working here. So I think this is right. I think this is a 1.2 meg drive. And I also think I got the cables connected correctly so that the three and a half inch is drive A. So I'm gonna put a disc into the three and a half inch drive and we're gonna see what happens. Well, I hear it trying to boot the disc and there we go. Sorry the top is a bit cut off. I need to, I guess, fix this capture card or adjust the resolution this computer is booting at, but the computer is in fact booting. This is actually the MS-DOS installer disk. So we're just going to quit from that and just drop to a standard DOS prompt. But this is very good. This means this machine like works. This is, this is great. We have a working machine here. Let's just kind of do that a little bit. We have an A prompt. Okay, so while we're booted up, let's try a few things. I put in a 1.2 meg disk into the drive just to see if this is a 1.2 meg drive. Um, either it's not, or it's just dirty, or I don't think this is, I don't know if this disc is even formatted. Okay, so that's not good. I guess I could try putting in the 360k disc and see if it can read that. I put it in a 360k disc, and when I know it was formatted. Okay. Maybe it isn't, I don't know, anyway. So either this is a 360k drive only, or that 1.2 meg disk doesn't work. Don't know. But, or about that later. Either way, it looks like this drive probably works. Anyway, what I really wanted to do was not test that, but to run a program called Check It. You've seen this probably in other channels. It just kind of gives you a bunch of info about the system. So, let's see what we get. At least, know, at least our A drive works. Go ahead and run this and see what it does. Loading off the floppy disk. As you all know, floppy disks aren't, you know, 
super duper fast. Check it. See what we get. So let's see what this tells us. I mean, obviously stuff we already know, but we have a 286AT machine. Yeah. Video adapter VGA. Okay, good. That works. Um, it says serial and parallel none, but we obviously have those on board. I don't know what we have to do to get that. There must be another page in that BIOS. I wonder if there was and I just didn't like notice. I'll go back and check real quick. Let's see what else we got in here. Also, the escape key is also kind of stuck. That's a bit bothersome as well. So let's test the memory. I mean, machine is clearly booting, so let's just see what this tells us, if this actually works here. Well, so far so good. All right, 640K of RAM is good. Now let's test above that. Wait, well, hey, look at that. These four six of RAM I found in a random bag of RAM are perfectly fine. So now we have the max four megs of RAM in here. Um, I can do a quick benchmark. Let's just see what that does. Yep, we have a 16 megahertz CPU. I will probably put a 287 in here once I get one. And we have this as our score. So we are a bit better than the PCXT, which is good to see. And yeah, the machine seems to be good. It wants the DOS disk back again, but I'm just going to power it off. So I guess the next step now is to, I guess, plug in the hard drive and see if we can't boot off of it. All right, with that, the hard drive is attached and I just grab another keyboard because I don't want to deal with the stuck keys. That's Lots of hard drive noise. Don't know if you can hear that. Don't know if it's good hard drive noise or a bad hard drive noise, but it's a hard drive noise. Let's give it a shot. All right, now I remember what the hard drive said its size was. This one, maybe? No, what, what one was it? All right, I'm gonna have to um, remember what size the hard drive said that it was. Oh, hey, if I hit page up, there's a bunch of other stuff here. Okay. Do I want to turn EMS on? I don't know. I mean, I have four megs of RAM. Do I want that? Extended memory. I don't know, it seems working the way it is. Let's turn on the um, serial ports though. And yes, you want Shadow ROM on. That's usually useful. Alright, I'm gonna go check what the hard drive size was. So it's a cylinder 782 and heads 4. And I interestingly can't seem to find that in here. So I guess I'll just pick one that's close enough. Or I guess I can actually just use XTIDE to do it. Yeah, forget this. I'm gonna get an XTIDE chip, put it on a network card, throw it in here, see what happens. Because we're going to need it anyway if we want to replace this with a compact flash card, so let's do that. So I tried putting in a network card and just kept making weird beep noises at me. Not really sure why. Weirdly, when I tried to run the configuration program for the XCIDE BIOS, it said that it couldn't find a hard drive controller. So either something wrong with this hard drive controller or it just legit doesn't recognize it. So if I do decide to, I guess, connect the XTIDE, we're going to have to just probably get another ID controller, which I have, so I might just do that. But I don't know why this network card wasn't working. I might need to try another network card as well. I'm just going to pick this one and see what happens. Hit the reset button on the computer. That works. See if this is the right hard drive type. If not, then I'll have to figure something else out. I still want to try to read this hard drive. Though I, yeah, so I might just need to go get another hard drive controller, connect it to here, disable the onboard one, and use that. 
And I may need to find a network card that, well, I can put it in here that won't beep at me. Well, let's try and read the hard drive. I don't know if I picked the... Yep, I guess that wasn't the right hard drive type. Either that or the hard drive doesn't work. I heard it making noise, so... I'm confident the hard drive might work. And I assume I plugged the cable in correctly. So... If I get back in the BIOS, I just, maybe I just keep pressing F2 here. Okay, so I guess it didn't like me hitting F2 over and over again. I don't know how to get into the BIOS without, you know, giving me a weird BIOS error. And since there was a BIOS error, something clearly isn't right. So I'll have to figure it out. Okay, so maybe something wrong with that other network card because I swapped in a different one, also with an XDIDE BIOS on it. So let's see if this can detect the hard drive. Let's see what happens. Okay. That's good. Booting C missing operating system. Okay, so maybe the hard drive is blank. Okay, so at least I know XDIDE can read the onboard ID controller. It was telling me it couldn't when I tried to configure it, but that's weird. Maybe it's that version of XDIDE or... I don't know. I also don't know what's up with the network card I was trying to use, so I'm going to have to figure that out. I can't keep this network card in here, so... Missed my chance. I want to hit the boot menu button because that will show me the hard drive settings that it's detected. Let's give that a shot. I'll press it once I get to the right chance. Here, right? Boot menu? Good. A, B. So this is the hard drive from the BIOS, the one I set up incorrectly. And here's, I guess, what it should be. So let's see if I can boot off of what this thinks it should be. That still doesn't work. Okay, yeah, so something wrong with this hard drive. So it's possible something wrong with the hard drive, or it's possible that XIDE isn't like the hard drive controller, because, well, I went in the BIOS and I disabled the hard drive, so it now doesn't have a hard drive set in the BIOS, which means XIDE should auto-detect one. And seeing as it didn't, that means either it was correct earlier when it said didn't like the hard drive controller or there's something wrong with the drive. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get another hard drive controller. All right, this is with a compact flash card connected. Yeah, definitely something up with XCIDE definitely doesn't like the hard drive controller in, in this system. I don't know why, but it could be why the hard drive isn't working. I don't know. All right, so it's been a few days and I've been messing with this thing and there's something really weird about it. So the built-in hard drive controller just doesn't want to work. Whether I use the hard drive that's in the case, whether I use a compact flash adapter, or whether I use just another hard drive I have lying around, I can't get the BIOS read from it and I can't get XTIDE to read from the internal hard drive controller either. So I've tried other hard drive controllers. I've tried an IDE, sorry, an, um, an ISA SCSI controller. I've tried an ISA, just another IDE controller. And I've even tried um, this. This is a, just a separate XT IDE card. This has an XT IDE BIOS built in and an IDE port. So let's see, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug it into any of the ISA slots. It doesn't matter which one. There's no hard drive connected to it or anything. It's just plugged in. So I'm gonna turn the system on and that's all I get is those beeps. I think those beeps have something to do with like the CMOS or something being weird, but 
I don't know. Without this card in, it'll boot up just fine, obviously, but it just has no, no hard drive. So technically this computer is usable because I can boot up a floppy and everything works, but the only thing that doesn't work is the hard drive controller and I can't add an external hard drive controller and I don't know why. So that's a little annoying, but you know, sometimes not everything you have, you know, everything works, you know, sometimes things work, sometimes things fail. So I'm not really sure what to really do here anymore, except I guess just kind of call it quits, you know? Okay, well, I guess that's it for this Office Mate 286 system. Everything works except the hard drive controller and adding in any other hard drive controllers just make it do that beep noise at me. So not sure what else to do with it, but hey, this was, you know, found it out at a state sale and um, surprise even turns on at all. I did buy some upgrades for it, but I guess I'll have to save them for something else. Like I have this 287XL here, which would go in here, but... Maybe I'll put in something else and also have this Vibra 16 sound card, which I could, I guess I could put in here. I could boot off of a floppy drive and load the drivers for this onto a floppy disk. And I guess I can use it that way, but we'll see what I'll do with it. And any other card I would put in here would have been like an ethernet card or something. So I don't know. I'm just going to uh, close this up and if I can think of any way to fix it or any other way to boot a hard drive off of it, I will try later. If not, then, well, this is just one other 286 I have, and I could always use another one or something. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you want to support me on Patreon, link's in the description. If not, just like the video, I guess, and uh, thanks.